understand the next component, flash to subject distance, we need to talk about the inverse square law. In photography and theatrical light, the inverse square law is used to determine the fall off or the difference in illumination on a subject as it moves closer to or further from the light source. For quick approximations, it's enough to remember that doubling the distance reduces illumination to one quarter, or similarly, to half the illumination, increase the distance by a factor of 1.4, the square root of 2. And to double illumination, reduce the distance to 0.7, square root of 1 half. When the illuminant is not a point source, the inverse square rule is often still a useful approximation. When the size of the light source is less than one-fifth of the distance to the subject. The calculation error is less than one percent. Any questions? So what does that mean to us? That definition was way too long. For us, here's all we really need to know about the inverse square law. Every time the distance between your subject and your light source doubles, you lose two stops of light. Anytime the distance between the subject and your light source is cut in half, you gain two stops of light. I know it may still seem a little confusing. Let me help you out. Let's take a look at a practical example of all of this. Let me give you an example of not only the inverse square law in use, but also I want to show you a couple of things that the square law does that can work in your favor. I just set up one speed light to demonstrate a practical application of the inverse square law. If I were to meter two feet away from my light source, it would require my camera to be set at f22 in order to be properly exposed at that distance. If I doubled the distance to four feet, I would lose two stops of my light. My camera would now need to be at f11 to be properly exposed. Let's double it again to eight feet and now our camera would need to be set at 5.6. Again, two stops less than it was at four feet. What I want you to notice is the distance between stops of light is getting larger. Let's bring in our band and try to expose the group correctly at two feet from our light source. What we notice right away is the person in front is properly exposed, but the person in the back is underexposed by more than two stops. One way we can try to fix that is to scrunch everybody up. This tends to make some people a little uncomfortable and a little awkward. Knowing what we now know about the inverse square law, would it not be easier to move them back to where the light may be less, but the distance between stops is greater? Notice, in the final shot, there is less than a half a stop difference between the closest band member and the farthest. What's cool about all of this is you can almost think of light as having depth of field. The closer you get to your light source, the narrower the depth of consistent light. Conversely, the further you get from the source of the light, the larger the area of even exposure. Light that is close falls off much quicker than light that is further away. A simpler way to take advantage of flash to subject distance is to move the light closer to add light and move it back to take some away. Remember when you're working close to a subject, moving a light six inches could amount to one whole stop of light. It doesn't take much. Again, flash to subject distance is another option we have for controlling flash exposure. 